Good evening. I hope you had a wonderful Sunday in the Lord, which is the last one of this month, October. And because this is the 27th, we in the evening go to Proverbs. And that first verse of the chapter that we're talking about, Proverbs 27, is a familiar one. Boast not thyself about tomorrow. Why? Because we don't know what's going to happen, what a day may bring forth. I thought for sure, I wouldn't say that I was boasting, but I was confident on Friday, like, okay, we're going to be back in the classroom either Monday or Tuesday. Oh, we put our trust in the Lord. We fully know that he can do absolutely anything. But in the meantime, while we're in the picket lines, we still have business to take care of. It says in verse 23, be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks. We still need to know and keep sharp. We need to stay sharp as far as what's going on in the world. Um, make sure that our skills are up to par when we return back to the classroom. I know I'm going to teach like never before. Oh my goodness. So this was revival for me. And it says, look well to thy herds. Now, we might not have cows and farm animals, but the herds that the Lord wants us to make sure that we are on top of are the people of God, the children out here. He wants to make sure that we are equipped when we go back so that we can glorify him like never before. Because this was, oh my goodness, this was a gap, but God knows the end. And we are in Second Chronicles, the fourth chapter, and it's a continuation of how Solomon built the temple, but some research. So Solomon finished building this temple in 960 BC. But then it was destroyed in 586 BC by the Babylonians. But check this out. The very place where the temple was built a thousand years after Solomon started building the temple, this was where Jesus taught in a much larger temple built on the same spot. Hallelujah. Isn't that, that's wonderful. In Jerusalem, God's temple was there when they came and they came to worship and to learn of the Lord. And we still go to different locations of God's temple. But the most important tabernacle temple is that we worship the Lord in our body. Amen. And we are representative of his glory and his goodness out in the world, when we're on the picket lines, when we're out in the street, right? At that bargaining table, we are representing the Lord. Uh, the preacher said today how you have these beautiful edifices and these buildings and these churches, and then you have the stained glass. And someone, someone described saints as this. You see these people painted on these windows. Well, there's light that comes in through the window to shine forth. And it's beautiful, right? Well, that's what the people of God are to do. We're to be able to have God's light shine through this temple so that we make a difference in this dark, crazy world. We're on assignment, y'all. Let's not get discouraged. And we know that there was so much gold in, in the temple courtways and there were so many basins and yeah, so much gold and brass and there was a great court and the candlesticks, but listen, we're to be candlesticks of the Lord. We're to be the great courts. We are to open our doors, our heart to the Lord. We are vessels in great abundance, verse 18, so that we make a difference. Hallelujah. For the most holy place, that's in verse 22. We should present our bodies a living sacrifice daily to be holy and acceptable, which is our reasonable service so that we can prove the good, acceptable, and a perfect will of God out here. Amen. And that's how we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. Okay. Well, I hope you have a wonderful evening preparing for another work week. Pray for our children, the, the teachers, the people at that bargaining table, that God will be glorified and our kids will not fall behind. And my goodness, there will be satisfaction. Have a wonderful evening. Enjoying God's blessings.